All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be talking about my favorite ski. The ski I bought, the ski I think is like the best Idaho, Utah ski you could buy. That's the Atomic Maverick 88 Ti. This is the ski I went out and bought. It's the ski I really like. The reason we're talking about the ski today is because Curated came out of the woodwork and decided to make a video about my ski specifically. I've been avoiding Curated because I'm trying not to be as negative as I kind of was in some of my early videos, but a lot of their insights really stink and I feel like they can kind of lead people astray. The new ones have gotten a little bit better, so maybe this will be better, but as far as what I thought of the Atomic Maverick 88 Ti, I love the ski. I think it's like the perfect Idaho, Utah ski just because it has that horizon tech, so if you have it in the 88 width, it gives you really snappy slum to GS turns, which is what I love. I run it in a 176 and I'm six foot one, but that's because I love those kind of quick radius turns. It also feels stable at speeds and the Horizon Tech allows it to have more flotation and buoyancy than a ski that you would typically see in that kind of width. I feel like it gives the best kind of buoyancy while also allowing you to just kind of shred on the trails. I like the QSTs more off trail than I do the Mavericks, but you know, about 60% of the time I'm on trail. And so I feel like the Mavericks do a great job shredding, but then also floating if you find kind of surprise packets of powder. That's my thoughts on the Maverick. The one downside that the Maverick series has is because it's so light and so kind of responsive, when you get into really adverse conditions like heavy, sticky, wet snow, the ski can suffer a little bit there. Because it's got that Horizon Tech, it almost works against itself. It'll get caught up on sticky snow more than similar skis. But you know, if you are doing a good job waxing the skis, you can get around that. You know, I'm gonna tell you the good and I'm gonna tell you the bad. So those are my opinions on the Maverick 88. It's like a really great ski. I think a lot of times people who don't pressure their boot through the turn don't tend to like it because if you're just expecting the ski to ski for you, it's not gonna do as good of a job. But hey, you know, if you're somebody who likes to be active in the turn, I think you're really gonna like the ski. Now, I've been going down the line on ski essentials as far as their comparison videos and kind of picking out the skis that I've skied and seeing where that lines up. This is just kind of a break from that. You'll see that probably next week sometime. But this video was just too hard to pass up because I love this ski so much and curated tends to be kind of out there. So, you know, this is just kind of a break from that. We'll go back to reacting to ski essentials, but this is just kind of a nice breath of fresh air for everybody. Yeah, I'm really excited to watch this video. I have not watched it at all, so let's jump right into it. And let's see what curated has to say about my skis. The Atomic Maverick 88 Ti. And again, I have the Maverick 88 Ti in a 2023, but it's the same for 2024 as the 2023. It's just a graphic change, so no big difference there. All right, and here we go. All right, we're already starting this video off by skiing at Switch. <laughs> you can ski these skis, Switch. That's not what it's meant for. It's meant for carving. What a weird way to showcase a ski. This is like a ski that's good at carving and powder. That's like its mixture. You can ride it, Switch, I guess, but like that is not what it's meant to do. You're already starting me off thinking that this is gonna be awful. Like you're already telling the audience that you don't really understand where this ski lies. If you want to ski switch and have a powder ski, that would be more like the Ben series, which I don't really like, but this is not, oh God. That's a bad first impression. Okay, maybe it gets better. Hey, what's going on everybody? Hayden Wright here, Curated Expert. Today, Jake and I had the honor of ripping the Atomic Maverick 88 Ti's. Atomic claims that this ski is good on groomers, bumps, in the trees, all over. And just so you guys know, I'm not. It claims it's good on the groomers? Yeah, it's really good on the groomers. I'm not associated with Atomic or anybody. These are good skis on the groomers. Also, he's got the Jeff from Ski Essentials jacket. I don't know if that's on purpose. Like, I guess people can wear the same jacket, but I always find it a little weird when I see ski reviewers wearing the exact same clothes as other ski reviewers. Sponsored or affiliated by Atomic or any of these brands. So Jake's and my opinions are truly unbiased and it's just what we think as we were skiing the skis in the conditions we had them in. If you want help finding the perfect ski, all right, yes, we know you're not affiliated, but then you like also sell the skis and you make commission or not commission, you make tips off of that. And like, okay, you're, you're kind of like all dealing in the same stuff here. Skis for you, hit the link below, get matched with myself, Jake, or any of the other experts. We'd love to get you kitted and fitted. The Atomic Maverick 88 Ti has a perfect blend of wood, fiberglass. Oh God, oh God. I know he's holding the GoPro, but this is like, they call this A-framing. 
where you kind of have like your body tilted and it looks like an A. Basically a way of describing that there's no upper body, lower body separation. And you need that to load that downhill ski properly. Which is really important for this ski because it's like, it's a very refined carve so you need to be able to put like an exact amount of pressure in to really enjoy it. Or at least like feel the nuances of it. Also like, did Curated just like cut their budget? Because everything is 360 video. I know it's like, I'm low budget, I'll probably have to do this this winter to get good footage, but like, they have multiple people, it's like a real company. Okay, let's see the stats on this video too before I go any further. 680 views, I mean, from a week ago. I don't know, this, that's a little weird. What's the likes on this? Nine likes. They have 10,000 subscribers? How do you have that many subscribers but nobody's watching this stuff? It's not like you come out with a lot of content. Weird, okay. In no. It also has Atomic Signature Horizon tech here, which is similar to like the shape of the hull of a boat. What this is gonna do is this is gonna let an 88 millimeter wide waist ski actually perform and float better in powder than some of its competitors that are 88 millimeters wide that don't have that Horizon Tech in the tip and tail. These were- Okay, he perfectly described Horizon Tech. And in previous years, they did not describe that right at all. Did they watch Zach's description? Because that is like, the, that's the exact wording that Zach and I use. I guess it's like, you know, that's probably what Atomic uses, or like, it's a pretty obvious explanation, so maybe that's not it. But this, that looks like something Zach said at Mount Hood this past summer. Okay, whatever. I mean, it's a good explanation. I don't care if they borrowed it, but it is funny. I wonder if they, <laughs> I wonder if they watched Zach's review. Although it couldn't be, right? This is from last winter. Good, that was a good analysis, okay? You described the Horizon Tech really well, and it does ski wider than you would expect when you go in the powder. When you're on the groomers, it feels really good. We're pretty stiff and burly. Which was great though, for skiing on harder snow, these things were great. I had no chatter at all, they felt super stable at speeds, and you'll be really confident if you're getting going fast, you'll be able to lay that edge without even trying. They, have they are not burly. Like, I love these skis, but they're not burly. They're like, pretty light. They really kind of feel like, they're like light, they're like a really fine carving experience, and I looked a little chattery from that video, but if you load the downhill ski, they don't chatter that badly. But they're not a burly ski, they just take pressure to load. And this guy, if he was like a little bit more on his downhill ski, it would be a lot easier. But I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna go too hard on him. He is carving at least, and who, who cares? That's fine. But I'm just saying that like, you would feel even less chatter if you had more downhill ski pressure. It wasn't meant as a dig at him specifically, it's just meant as like a, you would feel that even more so. If you can load downhill pressure, you can carve it. I would say like a K2 Mindbender, Vocal Mantra, those are burly skis. The Atomic Maverick's like pretty easy to get set up. It has good turn initiation in the tip. It just kind of takes some finesse. Have tons of camber underfoot and they hold edge on anything. Ice, soft snow, a little bit of powder. These things hold edge. They rip and grip. This is definitely more. Why would you need it to hold edge on powder? I guess if you're in the steeps, but like. That's more of like a tuning thing. That doesn't really have much to do with the skis. And I like these skis. <laughs> I like these skis a lot. These are my skis, but that was kind of nonsense. All right, let's see what the other guy has to say. I kind of recognize his voice. Can't remember his name, but I remember him having pretty good insight when I watched the K2 Mindbender review. And also like, I'm not gonna rip on this other guy's skiing. It's actually, it's pretty intermediate, but it's fine. Of an all mountain with uh, performance carving in mind. It's not the most forgiving. It's not the most playful. It's got a firm flex rating with reinforced areas where they have tetanol metal in it. These are not the best in deep snow. If you're skiing powder deeper than six inches, you might wanna bump it up. They do great in the trees, in moguls that are tracked out. Super easy, super nimble, perfect. Yeah, this is all right. I'm, I would say that you can still float on a foot of powder and still be fine. But everything else he's saying is totally on the money. You know, they're not like the most like light, easy turn initiation like a Fisher Ranger. But the turn you do get when you load up the ski is probably the most rewarding out of any ski I've skied on the West Coast. Honestly, like I know that you could say, oh, these cheater skis and the race skis on the East Coast on the ice. Yeah, it feels good. But if you want like finesse and carving, in Idaho, Utah, it's like this ski feels really good. The Rosignal Sender felt pretty good once it got locked in. The K2 Mindbender, the Salmon QST. I mean, this is probably the best for carving on the West Coast. But everything he's saying, like where it feels stiff with the Titanol, totally on the money. All right, okay. 
Maybe I was too quick to assume. For that zipper line, but again, not the most maneuverable in deep snow because they don't provide that float. With regard to freestyle, they hold up super stable into the jumps, not the most pop off jumps, kind of hard. <laughs> we'll address the jumping. I don't think these were built for jumping. Uh, as far as flotation, I mean, what do you want from them? They're 88 underfoot, like, they definitely float just as good as anything else in that category. Uh, if you want more flotation, like, try the 100 Ti, you might be really surprised by that. But, yeah, I mean, they float really good for an 88 underfoot. They float better in, than anything else I've seen in that range. And, you know, some of that is just how you ski on it, too. Like, I had the Vantage 90s all year which is the precursor to this ski. And I skied in powder all year. That was the only ski I had. I still had a ton of fun. I was still able to float. On really deep days, it got a little much, but it wasn't bad. So you can absolutely make a ski like this work in the powder. Is it perfect? No, of course, it's not that wide. But for the width that you're getting and the performance carving you're getting, you're getting a lot more flotation than you might expect. Hard to butter, light swing weight though, so you do have that going for you. You can get your threes around. But I wouldn't recommend landing switch. I wouldn't recommend hitting feature switch because it's just got barely a touch of partial tail rocker. So, you know, this is for your skier who probably will get four to six inches on occasion, but likes to rip groomed and hard packed snow. Not necessarily for your freestyle skier, not necessarily for anybody hitting jumps. But if you're skiing moguls, if you're skiing hard pack, if you just like to go fast, this ski is for you. If you have any- Has anyone ever claimed that they're good for jumps? Um, this is pretty good carving. He's got that hunched over kind of freestyle thing going. Um, but it's not bad. Like, he's definitely loading up the ski more than most people I've seen on Curated. So, he's definitely an advanced to expert. Probably more in the park, but he still has solid fundamentals on the groomers. Um, yeah, nobody's claiming that these are going to do that much in the powder. Like, that's just not what you'd expect with the ski. This ski's not gonna do much in the park for 360s and 180s. Like, I don't think anyone's really claiming that with the ski. As far as powder, I would say that you maybe didn't see that much powder. I don't know, I'm not sure where you took it, but I would say that I was surprised by the range of this ski for powder. Is it my first choice? No. But like, if you get hung up in it, I think it's really great, actually. Especially with how you can kind of finesse those turns. But yeah, like I, you know, I skied all year in this these big blizzards out in Idaho had no problem with it. It's not perfect, like I definitely wish I had had my 106s before last year, but you know what? They're cheap in the summer, so that's when I bought them, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I would say that you could get up to a foot of snow and still be good in these. You know, some of that again comes to what kind of wax you're using, what the snow conditions are like, but they definitely have a little bit more range than he's kind of describing. He's kind of describing them, he's kind of describing these as just a carving ski, and I would say this is like a good carving to powder crossover, because it allows you to take that line where it might be you have to take groomers to get to your line, and then hop into the woods and go in the powder. So I think it's a, I think it's a really like good way to get a good line, because it allows you really great skiing on both conditions. Any questions about what gear would be right for you? Come on down to Curate and get connected with an expert like myself today. If you like what you see, hit subscribe, hit the like button. Feel free to leave us a comment below. Let us know which ski you'd like to see us review next. Okay, that was one of the better curated videos I watched. And I'm like gonna be on these guys because this is my personal ski. I put a lot of mileage on it. I will say when you guys do stuff like this, like why you're starting out with a 180, I can see why this doesn't have a lot of views because I would click away. If I was buying skis and someone did a 180 on this ski, I'd be like, okay, why would they even do that on the ski? I guess it's kind of nice to know, but there's such a small number of people who are actually going to be doing freestyle stuff looking at the Maverick. Like, yeah, they're looking at the bent. They're looking at like other skis. They're not looking at this. The other thing I'll say is like, get somebody who's like really carving on them. The last guy did a pretty good job and I'm not going to like grill him too hard. The first guy really wasn't carving all the way. He was at like an intermediate level carving. The second guy was like an advanced carver, but you need somebody who can like really throw down, who can load up the downhill ski. Not saying that these guys are bad, I think the second guy had great insight on the powder, everything he was saying in the turn shape made sense, but there's just some nuanced pieces that you missed, like where does the turn initiate? It starts at the tip and then it really loads up. The things that you wouldn't notice in like a day or two if you're an intermediate, but if you're somebody who's gonna own these skis, you would notice it over time, and if you're an expert, you would notice it right away. So. Yeah, I mean, I think if you took the second guy, and then maybe somebody who had like a race background, like, what was that woman's name? I can't remember. Daryl. Like, take Daryl and put him on those, because these skis carve really well, and if you have an appreciation for carving, you're gonna really appreciate these skis.
But overall, not bad. I'm not as upset as I thought I was gonna be. I was like, oh no. <laughs> They're coming into my domain and now I gotta react, oh god. <laughs> but no, this is overall okay. I think the second guy has some really cool insight about where he's feeling the Titanol, where the ski kind of thrives. So I'm gonna give it a, a reluctant, like half a thumb up. But the first guy was pretty much total nonsense and they really didn't like get the ski in its element to talk about the nuances of what was good about it. I'm all for talking about a ski shortcoming, but I don't even feel like they talked about that really either. The ski gets hung up on really heavy snow. And you would notice that if you were kind of taking it in between terrains more. Some people will just do a full run of powder and a full run of groomers. You need to be able to mix it up to feel that difference when you kind of transition from one snow type to another. Overall, I mean, the second guy like gets a whole thumbs up, but the first guy gets a thumbs down, like at three quarters of a thumbs down. So you're, you're <laughs> somewhere in, or in there, not that it matters. But yeah, anyway, that's kind of my interruption to Ski Essentials. I just wanted to talk about Curious video because it came up on my feed and I love the ski. I have mixed feelings about Curated. They're usually not very accurate and their kind of videos are more just pushing people to buy skis rather than giving them the full picture. So hopefully my video helped you, helped give you a better sense of the ski kind of in its full breath. If you're somebody who loves carving and lives on the west coast or somewhere where you want to be able to take it on light powder as well, this ski really thrives. And like I said, this was my ski of the year. I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. You know, I bought the ski. I can't give it a better recommendation than that. But overall, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a lot. But more than anything, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Also, I have opened up memberships. I have three tiers. One is basically like the most basic one. It's gonna allow me to give you sizing help if you want sizing help on your skiing or your ski gear. I have also made it so that all the tiers will get the content early. So like my last couple videos, I published on Sunday just to kind of allow people to see it early. So if you're part of that membership, it supports my channel directly, but it also allows you to see content before it's published. I try to do it kind of Monday through Friday to make sure it's scheduled, but you know, sometimes I put it on the platform early, so if you're a member, you'll be able to see that. The second tier is me giving you like specific ski recommendations, and the third tier is like, I will look at video of you skiing and help coach you and give you critique. So that's what I'm offering. Don't feel like you have to do it. I just wanted to add that option to people who will utilize those tools, but otherwise, just, I really appreciate you being here and watching the video at all. So. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.